Good morning, Dr. Rafiq, Dr. Fairuz. Uh, today I'll be presenting a topic about uh, defibrillator versus cardioversion. So we will come to know about what is defibrillator and then cardioversion also. So what is defibrillator? It is a treatment of immediately life-threatening arrhythmias with which patient does not have a pulse ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia. And what is cardioversion is synchronized administration of shock during R wave or QRS complex of a cardiac cycle. Where we aim to convert an arrhythmia back to sinus rhythm, electrical cardioversion is used when the patient has a pulse but either stable or chemical cardioversion has failed or is unlikely to be successful. Scenarios may be associated with chest pain, pulmonary edema, syncope, and hypotension. Use in less urgent cases, example like a atrial fibrillation, to try to revert the rhythm back to sinus rhythm. So how does it work? During defibrillator and cardioversion, electrical current travels from the negative to the positive electrodes transversing myocardiums. It causes all the heart cells it contracts simultaneously and it interrupts and terminates abnormal electrical waves. This in turn allows sinus node to resume normally to the patient activity. So indication for defibrillator, we have a pulseless ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and then in case of cardiac arrest due to the result of the OS stall or something. An indication of cardioversion, we have a supraventricular tachycardia, uh, atrioventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, lactose, ventricular tachycardia with pulse, and any patient with re-entered tachycardia with normal, um, sorry, no rate, narrow or white QRS complex, where the rate is more than 150 per minute, and then who is unstable, such as uh, ischemic chest pain, acute pulmonary edema, hypertension, and acute altered mental status or sign of shock. So the difference between defibrillator and cardioversion, defibrillator is an emergency maneuver and when necessary should be promptly performed in conjunction with the prior administration of induction of sedative agent. Cardioversion is almost always performed under induction of sedation. The only exception are in patients with hemodynamically unstable or cardiovascular collapse, we won't give any sedation. So type of defibrillators, so uh, this is the automated external defibrillator, this is semi-automated AED and then this is a standard defibrillator with monitor and then this is transvenous or implantable defibrillators. So equipment we should be prepared for defibrillator or cardioversion uh, defibrillator or semi-automated uh, defibrillators, standard defibrillators, or and then we have a uh, pad which is double uh, right side and left side, and then we need some gel, and then ECG monitor with recorder, oxygen equipment, intub intubation kits, emergency pacing equipment, blood pressure cuff, pulse recorder, oxygen saturation monitor, IV line, suction device, and then a chart with ACLS medications. So how do we place the pad pedal placement over the chest while we're doing defibrillator? There are two way or two positions. One is anterior lateral and then anterior posterior. So in the anterior lateral position is a single pad is placed on the left fourth or fifth intercostal space and the mid axillary line. The second pedal is just placed to the right of the sternum edge of the second, third, rib intercostal space, which will be uh, somewhat like this, this picture around right here. And then the second one is in the anterior posterior position in a single pad placed in the right of the sternum as above and the other pedal is placed between the tip of the left scapula and the spine. It is something like that here. And then an anterior posterior electro position is more effective than the anterior lateral position for the external cardioversion of persistent anterior fibrillator. And then also it is also preferred in patients with implantable device who has already implanted device inside them to avoid stunt current to implantable device or damaging the, the device inside the body. 
The use of handheld uh, pedal electrode may be more effective than the self adhesive patch electrodes. The successful rate are slightly higher for the patient who is assigned to pedal electrodes because this handheld electrode improves electrode to skin to skin contact and then reduce the trans thoracic impairment. So these are the techniques for the uh, safe defibrillator. Emergency application which may be life saving and then elective cardioversion should be used cautiously with attention to the patient's selective or proper technique. Repetitive, repetitive attempt at a direct current cardioversion should be avoided. Advanced cardioversion or life support measures should be Institute in preparing the patient, such as obtaining intravenous line, preparing area management equipment, sedation drugs, monitor device, and electric procedures, such as oxygen, where medication we use, like, such as digoxin to be stopped, con uh, continue medication in the morning on the procedure under the uh, direction of the physician. After the procedure, do not, right, this is mostly the, these are the tips for cardio version, not particularly written. So these are the different types of waves uh, 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 which we use according to the joules, according to also to the situations like atrial fibrillation, energy which is required in monophasic is 200 joules, then biphasic always it is lesser than the monophasic because there will be two waves in biophasic, there will be only one wave in monophasic. So this is the chart, how we go about uh, when the patient has a cardiac arrest or uh, pulseless uh, antitotachycardia. So first, we should secure as the initial part, we should check the ABC first. So check for the oxygen, uh, pressure, blood pressure, oxygen saturation rate and then attach the uh, cardio uh, electrodes over the Body and then give oxygen to them, and then we check the rhythm from the monitor. So let's say we have we see a pulseless ventricle tachycardia. So we initiate the shock first, and at the same time we will be doing a CPR for continuously, and then we will do it for two minutes. And what meanwhile we should uh, uh what do you call? get the IV line and then uh, treat the underlying process also and then after the two minutes we just uh, check back the pulse if I, in the monitor whether it is shockable or should be continued with IV medications so if in case shockable we can proceed with another shock and then still at the same time we continue with the uh, CPR and then we can the second time we can start with medication with while which is such as uh, epinephrine and you'll be giving them for every three to five minutes and then after the two minutes and then again you reassess back the monitor for the shockable or shockable wave if still patient needed shock you can proceed with the shock again or continue with the cpr and then at this stage you can give Medication also such as amiodarone and lidocaine for the sedation also. As in case of uh, AC stool, uh, you start with CPR and then you check with the monitor first. And then in case you see any uh, after the AC stool base, you after giving CPR, if you see any ventricular fibrillation or any ventricular pulseless ventricular tachycardia, and then you can proceed with shock. So these are the example of uh, rhythms which we have in case of emergency situations and also non-emergency situation. So either you, when you see this kind of uh, waves, you should know whether when when can we give uh, synchronized cardioversion or when should we give uh, defibrillation. So defibrillation mostly we give ventricular fibrillation and then pulseless tachycardia. Other waves such as uh, 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 supraventricular tachycardia, 
a chill and then uh, a cheaper package there you can give a synchronous variation. So what is cardioration? Cardioration is usually done to a patient who is alive, sometimes stable, sometimes unstable. So we should check for the sign of low cardiac output, systolic pressures, and then access for the heart rate, any other symptoms such as uh, chest pain or heart failure. And then you only synchronize the cardioration shock is delivered during the QRS complex. And then when the rhythm is regular, uh, you see the RR wave is with equal intervals. The type of cardioversion we have uh, chemical cardioversion and electrical cardioversion. Arrhythmic medication are used to alter the flow of uh, electrical activities throughout the heart. Based on the clinical situation, chemical cardioversion can be performed in hospital in monitoring settings and also as an operation. Uh, electrical cardioversion is also known as direct current cardioversion. This electrical shock is synchronized to convert abnormal rhythm to a normal sinus rhythm. This internal cardioversion mostly used in uh, operation situation like as a thoracic surgical basin. So tachycardia with uh, pulseless. Uh, for algorithm. So usually you assess appropriate for the clinical condition of heartbeat and the patient has 150 beats per minute. So take it again. So you identify the main patient's airway oxygen and then cardiac monitor. So in case where the patient is hypotensive, having acute altered mental status, sign of shock, ischemic chest discomfort or acute heart failure. So you will proceed to synchronize cardioversion. Let's say you do, if you don't have any of this uh, unstable situation, you just proceed with uh, medication. So in synchronize, you can consider sedation and then you start uh, synchronize uh, cardiac shock. Usually medication we will be using uh, adenosine beta blockers. So in case of bradycardia, uh, it's the, the same algorithm. So initially you start with uh, maintain the patient airway, check oxygen oxygen uh, saturations, and you monitor the cardiac wave, and then you check for uh, you. IV access and then we can do ECG also. So let's say the patient doesn't have any of the causing agents such as hypertension, active ultimate status, or anything else like heart failure. So you just observe and then monitor only. You don't have to do anything. In case it's getting worse or what, there's no improvement, the patient is uh, unstable. So you can proceed with uh, giving uh, atropine. First dose you can give atropine 1 mg. So you can continuously give for every 3 to 5 minutes with a maximum dose of 3 mg. So if this situation doesn't work, so you can go for transcutaneous pacing or you can initiate the dopamine or anything also. So this is the conclusion of uh, the defibrillator and cardioversion. So Cardioversion usually used in a planned or not uh, what you call un, uh, serious conditions. Uh. Defibrillator is used in prompt and immediate situations such as ventricular fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, and then a severe point. So, cardioversion is uh, arrhythmia, uh, atrial fibrillation in the atrial flutter, and then uh, supra ventricular tachycardia. So this is the difference between defibrillation and cardioversion. Defibrillation is non-synchronized or usually used for cardiac arrest or very critical situation and use a high energy drill and then no energy is used extra for this drill. Uh, we won't ex escalate the drill for this uh, shock. So in case of cardioversion, synchronized, you will give shocks on the R wave and then for very arrest like arrhythmia or unstable patients, low energy level is used and then in this case we can accelerate the, the shock energy. 
The complication of these situations of uh, defibrillator and cardiovascular, the most common complications are harmless arrhythmias such as atrial ventricular and junctional premature beats. Uh, serious complication includes uh, ventricular fibrillation resulting from high amount of electrical energy and stress uh, toxicity. CV heart disease or improper synchronized outshock with RBA. It also can lead to thromboembolization in association with radiation in 1 to 3 percent of patients, especially in patients with uh, atrial fibrillation who have not been defibrillated prior to the radiation. Then, uh, recent and intracardiac thrombo should be excluded using transesophageal cardiac. Radiography prior to the cardiovascular and then the radiation has not been. Used. That's all for this topic. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Okay, before we go to the next um, uh, presenter, okay, we we'll recap back on our lesson today. Eh? So just now your friend presented on defibrillation and cardiovascular. So is it the same? Okay, the machine that you use is the same. Okay, just now you shown the picture of the defibrillator machine. So most of the machines that we have in our ED now and in this hospital is biphasic machine. Okay, the example above there, okay, this is a biphasic machine. Previously, we have a few units of monophasic machine. It's much bigger than this. Okay, two to three times bigger. Now most machines are biphasic. So when you use a biphasic machine, you use you only need lower energy. Okay. Because if you see the chart is now for VF and positivity, you need to give 200 joules. Whereas if you use a monophasic machine, you need to give 360 joules. Okay. So when do we use, uh, when do we need to defib the patient? So defibrillation done only in two conditions, which is positivity and also VF, only in these two. So when you want to say, I want to shock the patient, is the same meaning as I want to defib the patient. Okay, shock, defib is syn uh, a synonym, it's the same meaning. Another term is unsynchronized cardioversion. Okay, so shock, when you say I want to shock the patient, I want to defib the patient. So it's understood, the patient ha is either having VF or positivity. Okay, for cardioversion, cardioversion is done in any patient with unstable tachy uh, tachy arrhythmia. Okay, any sort of tachy arrhythmia, it can be VT, VT or pulse. Patient with SVT, AF, atrial factor, MAT, okay, a lot. Okay, so any patient with uh, unstable tachyarrhythmia, then we proceed with synchronized perversion. So how we, how do you know that the patient is unstable? So if patient is unstable, then this patient has signs symptoms of shock. Okay, so how do we know signs symptoms of shock? We start from head to toe. So the patient will be uh, appears drowsy, okay, tachypneic. Then after that, uh, you can see there's usage of accessory respiratory muscles. Then you go to the vital signs. Patients will be hypotensive. Uh, then you feel the pulse, weak pulse volume, poor peripheries. Okay. Then patient can also be diaphoretic. So these are signs of so shock. So patient is shock. Then first treatment, first sign is always synchronized perversion. So how much you need to give? This is based on your ACLS algorithm, Omni Joules. Okay. Uh, if it's a uh, narrow complex regular tachycardia, you start with fifty. Okay. Example: SVT, SVT, fifty joules. If patient is having narrow complex irregular tachycardia. Example: AF or atrial factor with variable block. Then you need to give at least hundred and twenty joules. If patient is having wide complex yeah. tachycardia, such as VT, you need to give at least hundred joules. So for if your Kind of version fails for each subsequent shock, you can increase the joules by 50 to 100. So for defib, do we need to sedate the patient? No, uh, patient is already collapsed. Uh. But for synchronized kind of version, always give your analgesia and your sedation. So for analgesia here, we give fentanyl. Sedation, usually we give mirazolam. And all this inform the patient, you have to tell the patient what you want to do before you proceed with your with your perversion. Okay. Verbally you tell the patient uh, okay, what you want to do. Then for all the patients that you want to proceed with perversion, you always have to stand by all your airway equipment. 
and you have the standby your staff because sometimes after cryovation patient can just collapse then you need to proceed with your CTR you need to proceed with your intubation so all make sure your resuscitation trolley is there your airway equipment all is available before you actually proceed with your with your cryovation okay let's say if you have a patient with VF or VT or patient with cryovation let's say after multiple attempts of giving defeat or cryovation if it's not successful you always need to treat the underlying force let's say you have a patient with VT you give 100 joules of uh, you shop with uh, you you can work with 100 joules patient still having VT then you increase to 150 increase to 200 patient is having persistent VT then all this reflect back look back at your reversible causes of your tachyarrhythmia which is your 5H and your 5Ts Okay, you look for any hypovolemia, hypothermia, okay, hi, uh, hydrogen ion acidosis, and you have your hypo and hyperkalemia. So if you don't treat the underlying cause, patient will have persistent uh, tachyarrhythmia. And then your T's, what are your five T's? Your tension pneumothorax, your thyroid tamponade, uh, thrombosis coronary, that's your MI, lah, thrombosis coronary. Yeah, thrombosis pulmonary, your, your primary embolism okay, so you have to rule out all of these causes okay. then another one which is important is the placement of your pedal and pads okay, most of the time I don't know if uh, what I see is that uh, a number of you place your, your pedal in, uh, uh, incorrectly especially the one at the apex okay, you have to make sure that the pedal is the location uh, is at your mid axillary line it should be between your interior and mid axillary line at the fourth or fifth interval space because if you put the pedal or pads medially okay not at the at the lateral part you put medially then uh, it will re require multiple shocks okay you need more energy okay, to stop the uh, the rhythm Okay, so always make sure the pedal or pads placement is correct. Make sure if you use a pedal, you place gel and you must apply pressure. Okay, there must be, the whole pedal must be in contact with the patient. Okay. It actually doesn't matter whether you want to use pedal or pads. But if you use uh, a pedal, make sure you put gel and apply pressure. If you use pads, make sure the adhesive, the glue part is... Uh, still able to stick onto the patient because the, the pads is only meant to be used once but most of the time we recycle most of the time here we, we recycle because of the cost so you have to make sure that the pads used is uh, still, still can be used or not you need to use your pedals okay so uh, I think that's all but you need to recap back okay your algorithm, you have to know which patient you need to defeat, which patient you need to uh, cardiovert and if you need to cardiovert, what is the amount of energy that you need to use how many joules then always remember, recall back your reversible causes, your 5H and your 5Ts okay, treat the reversible causes and if everything fail, always check back your equipment okay, sometimes there could be equipment failure like you don't put enough gel <coughs> Okay, there is not enough contact, the pedal and the pads is not functioning well, so all this you have to check first. Okay. I think we can proceed with the next presenter.